are tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. Well, guys, yesterday we found out that the legendary Phil Jackson, who may be the greatest coach in NBA history, 11 time NBA champion, he's on our side. He actually likes the NBA without the wokeness. He came down pretty hard on the Marxist NBA of China. He stopped watching the NBA the same time I stopped watching the NBA. And this is big, guys. This is really, really huge here because when you think of Michael Jordan, Kobe, Shaq, everything they had in common was Phil Jackson. I don't think you're going to see an NBA coach have 11 titles in your lifetime. I don't believe that's going to happen. And Phil Jackson, in the past, he's been very, very critical of LeBron James. Remember, he said some um, things in the past and the Wolves got triggered before when um, he was actually talking about LeBron James and his posse. Remember, LeBron James got triggered by the word posse. And now, guys, since he's come out and he has slammed the NBA, you knew that this was going to happen. The Wolves have now deemed Phil Jackson to be, you guessed it, a racist. Look here on Bro Bible. Phil Jackson is getting absolutely roasted by basketball fans for his comments on why he doesn't watch the NBA. Now, the NBA is just way, way, way too political for me. OK, I like to watch sports. Why? Just for the sports. I don't need the social justice. I don't need the Marxism. I just want to watch the game just for the game. Now, in case you guys need a uh, refresher here. Of what um, Phil Jackson actually said on his podcast, we do have the clip here. We'll get into that here in just a minute. But it says here, Phil Jackson's place in basketball history is safe as um, safe can be. The legendary head coach, 11 NBA championship reigns as a coach for the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers. He also has two more as a player with the New York Knicks. So he is a 13 time champion, guys. The Zen master also entered the Basketball Hall of Fame as a coach in 2007. But somewhat surprisingly, he says he hasn't watched an NBA game since the bubble playoffs. And he has a strange reason why. Now, this article here on a bro Bible, they seem to be against Phil Jackson. I'm just making that clear. This is their opinion here. Now, to me, this is not strange. This is common sense. If you look at the NBA Finals ratings, they're in the trash. Nobody is watching the NBA Finals. And we're going to watch this clip here. But even here in this article here, they're actually trying to say, hey, Phil Jackson's wrong. Half of the country isn't um, going away from the NBA. Uh, the ratings are just fine. Look at this here. They put right here. Of course, the, met the metrics uh, tend to disagree with Jackson's assertion. The NBA managed viewership growth in 2022-23. Despite ratings declining for television across the board, it also set a new record for attendance league wide. Now, here's the thing. This is how bad the NBA finals are. They actually lost out to um, the women's NCAA title. They lost out to that. And I don't want to hear this excuse about um, uh, TV declining across the board because what happened on the men's side NCAA tournament? Records. Records. Look here. This was on this past season, the Golden State Warriors here. They averaged six point six million. That was it. Now, of course, it was up some, but um, it was pretty down in the gutter. Five point two million average. And of course, the bubble all time low right there. Just around four million people watch the Lakers. And think of this, guys. Look who was in the NBA Finals last year. You had the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry um, and the Warriors, big name team, and the Boston Celtics, an historic team. Only 6.6 million. Watch those finals. Only 6.6 million. And if I'm not mistaken, man, ABC, guess what? That's on free TV. 
It's on free TV. All you need is an antenna or if you have cable, you're going to be able to watch the NBA finals one way or another. These ratings are crap. They're bad, man. They're declining. Look, look at this, guys. You got to go all the way back. Last year's finals ratings were the worst since 2007. When you have the Spurs and the Cavaliers and LeBron James is on that Cavaliers team. 6.2 million right there. 6.2 million. And by the way, guys, the Warriors, they just barely cracked that. But anyway, this is what uh, Phil Jackson said in case you guys need a uh, refresher here. Some of the guys I coached, they're talented, Phil. They're really talented players. I know, but I'm not enjoying the games. <laughs> mm. like, that's too bad. There's a new generation that'll like it. They'll like the game. So. Do you do you uh, still watch a lot of basketball or no? I don't. Tell me about that. When and did you stop immediately from the time you stopped coaching? No, I didn't. I watched some of the game evolve and decided, and they went into the lockout year and they did something that was kind of wanky. They did a bubble down in Orlando, mm -hmm. and all the teams that could qualify mm -hmm. went down there and mm -hmm. stayed down there. Mm -hmm. No audience. And they had things on their back like, you know, Justice, and uh, yeah, I made a little funny thing like, uh, you know, Justice just went to the basket and uh, equal opportunity just knocked him down. <laughs> and uh, somebody, uh, I had another name for a guy who has jersey in the back of a jersey, he had some other slogan. So my grandkids thought that was pretty funny to, to, to play up those names. So I, I, I couldn't watch that. And the Lakers won, actually. They, they won, won that year. And, uh, do you feel like it just made little of the game, like it made it like a sideshow? What do you think it was that turned you off? Well, it was, it was, uh, they even had slogans on the floor, on Mark the baseline. Uh, it was catering, it was trying to cater to an audience or trying to bring a certain audience into play. And it, they didn't know it was turning other people off, you know? Mm -hmm. Bingo. People, people want to see sports as non political. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had we've had a lot of different type of uh, players that have gone on to be like you know Bill Bradley was a senator, number of baseball players been representatives and senators and political, but their politics stay out of the game. Yeah, it's separate. not doesn't it's need separate. to be there. Yeah, yeah. No reason to have politics in sports. When you mix those two, you end up with finals ratings like this, like that. But um, look here. This is what some of these people are actually saying about Phil Jackson. Uh, feels cowardly to mock black athletes when your entire reputation and bank account is built off their hard work and talent. He's not mocking black athletes. He's just saying the NBA should not engage in politics. And this is what they have done. Adam Silver allowed this. He's allowed this and NBA's ratings are in the trash. Uh, let's go here to another one here. Here we go. Phil Jackson now racist, man. Look at this. Phil Jackson is an old racist that's been uh, riddled with health issues. So I hope his grandkids do find him funny because he's on his way out of here. My goodness. So he's saying that Phil Jackson's going to die. Uh, people like Phil Jackson. Uh, George Carl, even Stockton and Malone aren't missed in the NBA. Man. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Phil, Phil is just lying. His issue is not with uh, politics and sports, regardless of the message. His issue is with that uh, specific activist messaging uh, being sent. But he knows saying that would be unplatable. So he takes the coward's way out. And raises a vague concern about policies. He's not raising a vague concern. That's a major concern. It is a major, major concern, guys. When you start, like the NBA went out there. And they engaged in politics in elections. The NBA shouldn't be doing that. They actually turned arenas, arenas into polling locations. They took, um, 
They canceled, um, they didn't schedule any games. They didn't cancel games, but they didn't schedule games on voting day, election day, and the midterm elections because they want you to go out there and vote for socialists. This is what they want to do. Next one here. Uh, yeah, I knew Phil Jackson was trash. America has never had a problem with uh, mixing sports and politics. They just don't like it when the politics knock on their own doors. What the NBA did in that bubble, man, they cross way, way over the line. As an entire league, they knelt for the national anthem, put a Marxist organization on that court on 9-11. When you actually had the military singing the national anthem, those NBA players knelt down. I will never, ever forget that, guys. I will never, ever forgive the NBA for that. Kneeling on 9-11, the national anthem, 3,000 people lost their lives. And these Marxist NBA players knelt down and disrespected this country. I will never, ever, ever forgive the NBA for that. That was the ultimate slap in the face, I believe, to American people. On 9-11, they couldn't even stand for that. It's just so, so disrespectful. Look at this here. Phil Jackson seeing uh, those slogans on the court. So they bring up uh, Don Johnson there, the plantation owner from uh, Django Unchained right there. Get ridiculous, man. I'm standing with Phil Jackson on this. Phil Jackson is not a racist at all. He felt the same way we all did. When you get woke, man, you're going to alienate a whole bunch of people. And he's right on the money with this. But that's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white sports fans, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.